Atlantic salmon have one of the most incredible life cycles, I think, of any creature. Um, they start off as eggs in the streams, burns and rivers throughout Scotland. Um, like this, this river here, there'll be eggs in this river. Um, and then in the spring they hatch um, as alvin and they spend the next one to four years in the river growing. Um, and then when they're ready to go to sea, they transform into um, smolts. And by this point, they're about this size. And then they travel down our river systems all the way out into the ocean and then head off to the North Atlantic to the rich feeding grounds um, off the coast of Greenland and Norway. Um, where they spend the next one to three years usually feeding and growing into adult salmon. And when they're ready, they retrace their journey all the way back to the same river and then the same even space within the same river where they were born. So Atlantic salmon are found in any river that is free of barrier um, and that has good enough habitat for them to be able to, um, to spawn. And so that means that they're found in most small and large rivers throughout Scotland. So obviously they need different habitat for different stages in their life cycle. Um, to be honest, we're standing at the Alt Lorgi and this is kind of the perfect habitat. Uh, what you want is you want a variety of different habitats within the river. So you want deeper pools so they can um, hide from predators and also those are cooler in the summer. Uh, you want um, gravel and uh, riffles. Uh, the gravel is really important for the spawning. So the, the female salmon use the gravel to cut a red, which is where the salmon eggs are laid. Um, and then on the banks of the river, you want a diverse mixture of different vegetation. So you want shrubs and trees. And they're really important because the trees provide shade. And there's also um, lots of insects and other kind of wildlife that live amongst those kind of fringes of the river. And um, they can be an important food source for the salmon. I think there's lots of things we can use to do salmon spawning habitats and, and you know, enhance it, you know, from putting trees in the river to, you know, getting trees along the side of the river. And I think probably the biggest thing is, is to work with the landowners and farmers to, you know, enhance what they've got. To improve and protect salmon uh, spawning areas, and uh, you have to look at the, the river as a whole. You have to look at the whole catchment, whether it's the tributaries or the main stem as well, because we've got a lot of salmon spawning in the main stem as well, so you can't ignore what's happening in the main, main river as well. We've been you know, protecting and enhancing salmon for you know, probably 15 years with the Spay Catchment Initiative. So where we are just now in the Alt Lorgi, that was one of the first projects that we've uh, had delivered. So that was what, 12, 12, 13 years ago this was? So you know what you're looking at just now, it was basically a blank canvas. There was no trees, it was heavily grazed. There was deer, sheep, horses, everything was here. So yeah, what you're seeing now is 12 years of hard work. Unfortunately, there's been a huge decline in Atlantic salmon over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, in the 1980s, uh, was about the peak of Atlantic salmon populations within Scotland. Um, and then on rivers throughout Scotland, including the Spey, um, Atlantic salmon populations have declined around about 80% over that period of time. Um, so unfortunately, Atlantic salmon at the end of last year got reclassified from um, a least concerned to endangered um, population. Um, and that's not just in one river, that's across the whole of their, uh, their, their range. So yeah, they're now in kind of um, in crisis. The Atlantic salmon populations are in crisis in Scotland and across the whole of, its, uh, of, of the range in the North Atlantic. Because Atlantic salmon, their life cycle takes them to so many different parts of our river systems and then into the ocean, there are lots of different man-made um, pressures on them at all those different points in their, in, their, um, in their life cycle. So the reality is that there's lots of things which are causing that population decline. So Atlantic salmon travel from the mouth of the Spey all the way into the very headwaters of the Spey and, and its tributaries. So they travel over 100 miles to reach those, those, those headwaters. And it's actually in that upper catchment where we're seeing the highest temperature extremes, which are um, causing thermal stress and also potentially killing salmon. So to give you some context, if the temperature in the water rises above 23 degrees, that can cause stress uh, within those Atlantic salmon. And if it, gets, if, if it stays at that temperature for a prolonged period or goes higher, then it can cause death. So for example, we're seeing temperatures now in excess of 25, 26, 27 degrees in this upper catchment. And one of the reasons for that is that um, the water's shallow, but really importantly, there's no shade. So there used to be a lot of vegetation, mixed vegetation and trees along those upper catchment rivers and, and tributaries, um, like you can see here in the background. 
but unfortunately now most of our upper catchment is devoid of, of, of any vegetation along the river banks. So Atlantic salmon are legally protected in Scotland and the protection means that a lot of human activity is, is um, closely or is limited so that it doesn't adversely affect Atlantic salmon. The Lorgie here, you know, to improve it to start off with, we did baseline electrofishing so we knew there was relatively zero population of fish. We did red counts, so reds where the salmon spawn. We knew there was a few salmon spawning here, but the habitat wasn't suitable for sustaining them in this area. So we put trees in, we planted trees, we had to fence the area off to take the grazing pressure off. But yeah, it's, it's from, from the offset, we knew we are on to an improvement. So I think it's improved by 400% the fish population within that 13 year period. So you know, if you upscale that to a catchment scale, this is a relatively small site, you know, it's only 800 metres of, of river. You know, if you, if you took the whole barn or the whole catchment of the river downland here and did something similar to this, you're making a huge difference for Atlantic salmon. The changes that we've seen here, the, the way the project was delivered in the first place was that we, we made suggestions to the river. We didn't actually make any physical statements to move in the river, to re-meander it. We put the trees in and let the river do what it wanted to do and we're still letting the river do what it wants to do so it's evolving all the time. It's creating more habitat, it's delivering a little bit of natural flood management. We've got tree rege regeneration on the site so yeah, it's delivering an awful lot of things that in fairness, 13 years ago, it wasn't even talked about. I think we, you know, land managers are, are pretty aware that salmon are now an endangered species. So, you know, we, they are an indicator species. So, you know, what's what's good for salmon is normally pretty good what's what's going on round about the river. Because, you know, as a, as a fisheries manager, I look at the river, but I have to look at a broader picture. So, you know, I have to look and work with farmers, foresters, and different landowners, you know, and, and we're, We've been very guilty in the past about maybe not joining the jigsaw puzzle up, but going forward with the climate emergency that we're in just now, we have to put the bits of jigsaw together and all work together. This project has been massively successful. We've got the data which shows that it's been successful. And so now we can take this, what is a relatively small project, and expand and show people one that it works and that this model of working with land managers, working with landowners and working together to, on a project like this works and we can expand that hopefully out to a much bigger scale and that's what's needed really for Atlantic Salmon. We need this sort of project to be delivered on a catchment scale on much larger rivers um, so that we get those bigger benefits. Mm -hmm.